before we start here with these announcements and things, Miss Betsy Bagel has an announcement she would like to make. Okay, it's an announcement, it's a request. It's just sort of an urgency. Um, we have been helping a, a family, the Garcia family now for a while, and I just wanted to give you an update because there, there are some things that have happened recently that most of you, that you know of the family and I think you might want to know about this. Um, after the dad, Garcia, got home from Mexico back in February and then he had a cancer diagnosis, very serious, he's not able to work at all and he's going through a difficult course of chemotherapy. Uh, after recent tests showed his numbers were slightly better, they're gonna continue the, the chemo. So um, with this, they have some insurance, poor insurance, but um, it still is pricey every time he has chemo twice a week. And uh, he has some, also some expensive medicines he has to take to go along with his treatment. Um, little seven-year-old Angel, who has been in Scottish Rite ICU since January. He was put in, he had many problems as he grew up, you know, from birth. And um, when he got COVID at the end of the year, it caused him to get this, what's M-I-S-C, anybody who's in the medical field, it's, it's a, uh, a condition caused by COVID where you can have a lot of inflammation around your organs and he had a lot of uh, bad case of this. And so in January, he was put in the ICU uh, unit at, at uh, Scottish Rite, and he's still there. Um, in May, just a few weeks ago, he received a lung transplant, which was badly needed, and so far so good, and no uh, signs of rejection yet. So that is great news. However, uh, this past week, he and Brittany, Brittany is the mom who spends every night since January, spends every night at that hospital mm. with uh, Angel. And both of them were uh, tested positive for COVID. And there are several people on that floor in that hospital that have tested positive for COVID. Just uh, everywhere, it seems like now. And so now they're both quarantined for at least seven days. Back to Brittany, the mother, she, in, back in May, uh, about a month ago, she went into some training uh, for a job, got certified to, to drive a forklift. She's amazing. <laughs> and um, began this job at this warehouse over at Palmetto Way, RPM, something like that. And um, after two weeks, she got her first check, and she excitedly paid her own bills at that time. And then went back to work for two more weeks, mostly 12-hour days, mostly six days a week. And then when her check was due the next, the next time, it never came. And they have yet, they have not paid their employees yet for that check. And I don't know what's happened to that warehouse. It may be closing down, I'm not sure. But they have said, they sent out a thing that said by July 8th, they will try to cut, they will try to cut the checks for their employees. And that doesn't, I'm not, Thinking that's too promising either. Um, thankfully, she doesn't mess around. She went right out and got her another job. And she has a job at the, let me say it, Hoshizaki. Hoshizaki. Yeah. That's around Peachtree City Way. And she's got that job. And uh, but now she has COVID. But thankfully they are holding that job for her. So when she gets clear, she will go back to work and, and uh, the pay is even a little bit better than she was making. She won't have 12 hour days though. Well, with her job situation the way it is and the insurance being so poor, their financial needs are very critical again. The rent's due this week. Other bills are coming due. Garcia's treatments cannot be delayed. He has two a week. And then there are five girls at home that need food and necessities too. The Garcias, they are, they just trust the Lord. It's amazing that uh, we, we have marveled, the ones of us that have gotten to know Brittany are just amazed by her every day that she, is, she just, her, her faith has not um, been affected. But she's having such a hard time. And they love the Lord. They're overwhelmed by our Coach Chapel generosity. 
because you have <coughs> helped so much. Our Sunshine Fund has been very helpful to do it too. And we're asking you today, maybe you would like to help with this immediate need for them. Tika and I are going to be around after church. And if you'd like to talk to us about how you can help, then just see us. Um, you could give cash, you could give checks designated for the Garcia family and go give it to the church or, or just give it right to, to Tika and me, however you want to do it. But I'm just asking for your help for this very needy but trusting family. Thank you for, uh, y'all are always so generous and I, I, I thank you so much for them. Well, thank you, Miss Betsy, for that. And uh, let everybody know that we, we are a praying church and a giving church. I can speak from that directly because I know. I know. Trust me, I know. And it is a deep felt, heartfelt thing that I have for each and every one of you here. Uh, so if you can, please give. Please see Betsy or Pika afterwards. And I'm sure, I'm sure that they'll use it for a great cause for this family who needs it more than we could ever imagine. But the good thing about that is, is the unimaginable thing for us is realistic to God. It's the truth. Um, if you would, please uh, take a look at your bulletins and things like that. We have ongoing prayers, continued prayers. Uh, for each and every one of us, for the Carter family as well, I think he's still not feeling good, but maybe a little better. we are got got uh, shot scheduled for the end of August. It's just thinking about having to go through to the end of August is hard. So please keep that Carter family Larry in, in your prayers. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, also, uh, we have a... Uh, Oh man, I forget the baby shower. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a baby shower coming up also for Melissa, right? Melissa Smith. So so look at that and look at look at uh, look at that and uh, also we have summer cleaning coming up, right? Who's in charge of that? Uh huh. No. <laughs> no. So that means everybody's in charge, right? Uh, <laughs> Summer cleaning coming up. I'm sure that if you pick a Sunday or, well, not a Sunday, but maybe a Friday night or a Saturday, you can come do that, right? You clean up uh, or come up and just have a good fellowship with people, uh, with the congregation. Also, across the street, there's a great, there's a great Sunday school going on over there with uh, Pastor Carson. Really, really good. The chosen. And it's always fun. And we've got a little thing that we've done the last couple of months where after the class, we have a little session ourselves just as a group, and it's a really good thing. We share a lot of things over there. Um, so, uh, is there any other announcement anybody needs to have or anything like that? No? So, I want to say something, and I'm sure I've said it pretty much every Sunday that I've been up here, that you are special. You, 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 everybody. Not just in this building, outside those doors of the community, are special to God and that God loves you. He loves you so dearly. So dearly. So, uh, if you would, with that being said, let's bow our heads for the opening prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that we can come before you. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, we want to say a special prayer for the Garcia family. They are, they are in need, Lord. They, they love you so dearly. For a family that has struggled, you have offered so much through others, through us, Lord. And we are so thankful that we can be a part of that. Dear Lord, I ask also that you help us, Lord, hold to the past and keep us strong in the present. But, Lord, give us faith and hope for the future. Lord, no matter what legislations are passed, how we feel or we don't feel about it. We put these things in your hands, Lord, and we pray for peace, Lord, not just in our country, but throughout the world. A lot of things that are happening in governments all over the world, Lord, and I just pray that they put you first. Lord, I ask that you be with each and every one of us here. Lord, be with the 
choir, the musician, Pastor Carson, and with each and every one, each and every one that's here, Lord, and for those who couldn't be here with us, Lord, we pray that you'll keep them safe and bring them back home to us. Lord, this is not our church, it's your church. And Lord, teach us to understand that, Lord. And the message that we receive here, Lord, let it really touch us and resonate with us, Lord, so we can take it out into the community or to the world, Lord, to let them know that we belong to you, Lord, and that you have provided and you will continue to provide. <coughs> Dear Lord, I ask that you be with each and every one of us here, and we pray these things in your love and divine holy name. Amen. 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 Let's stand together and continue to worship the Lord on page number 549, where charity and love prevail, and we see the first two verses and the last two verses.
so glad that you know each other, that you like to be with each other. I'm so glad that there are people to hug and embrace, some people that haven't seen each other in a while, some people that saw each other yesterday and are still hugging each other. But this, this is what the Lord does. It brings us the, into the fold where the Good Shepherd teaches us about love, teaches us about how to love. Will you go to God in prayer with me as we begin to uh, offer up our our offering, and I'll, I'll ask the ushers to please come forward. Holy and precious God, we give you thanks this very day. We give you thanks that you do not withhold your grace to us, that you lavishly give us your love and grace and is freely given. And in that same way, God, we pray that we might freely give of ourselves, of our time, our energy, of our money, of things within us that can help to build the kingdom of God. <coughs> help us to love the way that you've loved us. In your holy and precious name we all pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, everybody. Y'all have really showed us how to enter into the courts with praise this morning. That's uh, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> that always surprises me. Why that surprises me? So many things to be prayerful for, prayerful for, um, and so many things to give thanks for. Uh, one thing that happened this week, we had BBS, and uh, this was an exceptional week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, did a, a mission trip to Louisville, where some of the kids got to go and be a part of that. Friday, had a closing celebration um, with a cookout. If you were a part of BBS in any way, as, as a camper, as a volunteer, as someone helping on Friday, on Thursday, would you stand up real, for me real quick? I just want people to see who is involved in BBS. Yeah. This was, this yeah, sir, we had a lot of people that helped that didn't stand up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> a bunch of people, uh, and we are appreciative. All the food, the donations of items, uh, there was a, a lot going on, and it was a really, really, really special week. Um, getting to see, uh, of course, the kids and be a part of, of just the process of BBS, but to see this church at work, uh, building those kingdom seeds, as it were, um, in the next generation. A really, really beautiful thing to see. Will you go to God in prayer with me? Holy and precious God, we give you thanks this morning, trusting that this is your day. That this is your hour, and as we prayed with the choir before service, we said, this is your service, God. That this is not our church, our hour, we don't want it to be our making, we want it to be about you. And what you have to show us. We have enough people telling us what we should know. We want to know what you think. We want your opinion. We want your grace to rest upon all of our hearts this very hour. The way that no human being can teach us. We want you to teach us. God, we pray for this country. We pray for our world. As Mike has lifted up, there are so many different uh, ideologies, ideas, philosophies at play in the world right now. God, we want you. We want to submit to you. We want to trust the word of God. It is the lamp unto our feet. May it guide our feet, not for miles and miles, but just at least the next right step. A lamp on your feet. The next right step to see what is in front of us. Enough to take one more step, one more step, one more step. As we all march into glory. As we all march towards your salvation. You are always in the business of making things better. Of taking broken things, broken people. And redeeming the story. And reconciling them. God for that we're greatly and eternally thankful. We ask these things, Father, God, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen. <coughs> Amen indeed. Um, I would also ask, uh, I think you have one, one of these on your pew. If you wouldn't mind just filling this out, uh, it should just take a, but a moment. Um, you may have been here for ages, and maybe this is your first week. Um, and if you don't have one, raise your hand and we'll make sure that we get you one. Um, but uh, we, we just want to put you on a spam email list. <laughs> no, we want to know, we want you to be a part of what we're about. If you want to be a part of things, if you want information, uh, we do a weekly uh, update list. You can get on that if you want. Um, we uh, 
we have a prayer list to keep the congregation informed if you'd like to be a part of that, just so you can know what's going on in the life of the congregation, different events that are happening, different people that are in need. Um, all that is, is in there. Our scripture today comes from Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 5. And so if you are able, stand either in body or in spirit, as we read our scripture today, please. Hear the word of the Lord. Galatians 5, verses 1, 13 through 25. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. Stand firm then. Do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And, this, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, Bits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. to God, you may be seated. Amen. You've heard this before. You've grown up in church. There's probably a BBS all about the fruits of the Spirit, right? I know there are songs about it. We've sung it in chapel time. I know that you know that there are these things called the fruit of the Spirit. And here we are in the midst of the season of Pentecost. Pentecost that happened at the beginning of this month marked that time in the second chapter of Acts where the Holy Spirit came and descended upon the people and they could understand one another. People that were far off in different nations came to understand one another all in the name of Christ. The Spirit of Christ made them one despite their differences. And, and that season of Pentecost, it lasts for a long time and we chose not just to mark the day but to at least mark this, this season uh, at least through June with our flame, our extra candles. It's a reminder that the Spirit is always at work in the church. It's always at work in you. And the fruit of the Spirit is that, that marker that says that Pentecost came and it actually did something. It's here and it's got some proof to it. It's here and there's evidence in the people that say they claim to follow after the Spirit. How, how so? Well, maybe they won't have as much selfish ambition or envy or jealousy. Another way of putting it, maybe they'll be gentle, self-controlled. Maybe they'll be patient. Maybe they'll have love, joy, 
So there are markers, uh, evidences, like I said, that, that point someone to proof that they're following after the Spirit of Christ. In the Bible, though, there's, there's a lot of, of talk about you're either following this Spirit, this way of God, or not following this way of God. All the way back to the Old Testament, teachers of ancient Israel even would have been teaching about the two ways, they call it. The two ways, the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. And I thought, just to, something that you may have heard, if we could pull up uh, Psalm 1, let's read this and maybe even read it uh, together. You might have heard this before. Blessed is the one who does not Stop walk in step, step with, with the wicked, wicked or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. chapter. It's the start of Psalms. It's the very beginning. It's this ancient song book that the ancient Israelites would gather their people together and they would recall these songs and poems and prayers and, and say this is what it means to fall. That there are in every day there are two ways. And you have the power within you to, to live a life that will lead towards more life and more goodness and more fruitfulness. And you have the power in you that will lead towards death, destruction, darkness, and despair. Which will you choose? See, the scripture is very clear on, on this from the very beginning. And so I wanted to take you back to the Old Testament so that then we could go even further in the New Testament to hear another way of how James, in the book of James, puts this same dilemma. James chapter 3, well, really, the book of James is really all about works versus talk. <laughs> You know, in a lot of ways, James starts out, it's like, you've heard that, you know, you should do this and this, and blesses the man, that, but what, what good is it if you look and you say, but you forget the person in the mirror? If you forget after you just said what you would do, and you just go and don't do it. If you're double-minded, if you don't do what you say. Well, here in James, it's talking about the tongue. Chapter 3 starts out, uh, the tongue is like a fire, that it has the power with words to completely make or break someone. You can lift them up or you can tear them down, and you know that because you've, you've had it. You've had a compliment and you've had disdain by the same mouth. Well, let's read this together. This is, again, verse 10. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring Fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven but is earthly, 
unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right? See, the, the Word of God, I hope you're in the Word. Okay? The, the, the Bible has, has a power that nothing else can. If we're going to say as Christians, as God followers, Christ followers, that, that we believe in God or we believe in Christ, we have to believe that the Word of the Lord and the Word of Christ are something that we're putting up as powerful, as prominent, mm -hmm. as a priority in our life. Amen? Mm -hmm. I mean, if... Sometimes people think, well, it's kind of a mystery. Yeah, I believe in God or whatever, but who, who's to know? Who's to know anything about this? Or who's to know if, if this would be right or that would be right? Well, is, is it in the Bible? I mean, are there things? Because there are places that we could look to see how God's faithful people responded to this question. There are places we, could, we can go to see how does James deal with, with actions and words? How does James deal with bitterness and fractions and factions and dissensions? How does Paul deal in, the, in Galatia with factions and dissensions and all kinds of problems? How do many of us deal with all of the many divisions that we have in our world? Pick your topic. Pick your issue. Pick your place even in the country or even in the state. And it might be more this or more that, but God is all pro-person. God loves all the people. And so in any way, shape, or form, a follower of God is going to be a follower of wanting best for all the people. What does that look like? It's always a mystery to untangle it all, but that's our job as followers of Christ and followers of God is to wrestle <coughs> these things. <coughs> Ancient Israel was called Israel, which means wrestling with God. Wrestling with God, and that is what it means to be faithful, is to wrestle. It doesn't mean to just have it so simple and walk that nice new answer blindly, and now you got it. <laughs> you wrestle. You wrestle with it. These things are not meant to just be simple answers, but they are answers nonetheless. Okay, all that to be said. Then, uh, well, where are we? I mean, let's, let's maybe open this up just a little bit. So when we've got a, a, a spirit and, and a proof of the spirit, there's a, a way to live in it. Ancient Israel knew that there was a way. And now Jesus is really adopting and following and really continuing these two ways. And some of the things that Jesus will talk about, like a parable that says, there was a man who built a house on sand. There was a man who built a house on the rock. Right? These are the same types of teachings that you would find in, in ancient Israel. They understood about the two ways. The way in Psalm 1 of the way of the righteous. The way who follows after the principles of the Lord and the way of the wicked. The way that turns an ear away from God. And it's not if the rains come, it's when. The rains come, how will this house fare? Jesus also tells the people, what you loose in heaven, or what you bind, I should say what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's another Jewish way of saying the things that, that you do here, they do have eternal implications. That, that, that there's, and it's the other way around, that, that this way of heaven can impact you. You, you, 
You have the power to bring heaven or hell. Now is kind of what Jesus is saying. Ooh. You have the power to bring life or death into any and every situation. What will we do? Will we be bearers of the fruit of life? Or will we be bearers of the fruit of death? Because that's really Galatians 5 is the fruit of death is it's that <clears throat> fleshly, earthly impulse that is so easy if we are not guided by the Spirit, what happens? Selfish ambition, envy, and all the darkness and destruction that can come. So at the end of Deuteronomy, there's this big kind of epic moment in Scripture looking back over the quick snapshot of the Israelites that came out of, of finally left Egypt, they finally left slavery, and what we sometimes say is, you know, the first part of Exodus is um, getting the, or sorry, getting the uh, Israelites out of Egypt. The second half of Exodus and a lot of Deuteronomy is getting the Egypt out of the Israelites. <laughs> Because they have a bondage mindset still. They've got Pharaoh in their brain. They've got mindset of, you're only as good as how many bricks you made. And then they go to Mount Sinai and hear Moses come down. And there's these different Ten Commandments. And it's not just about bricks. It's about respecting each other and their property autonomy in life. It's a really different way of dealing with people. It's not just about what can you do for me, it's how, how can I interact and live with you. And now Moses, nearing the end of his time. This is Deuteronomy 30. I'm just going to read this um, if we can. And this is sort of a, they set it up in the Bible too, it's like a big epic climactic moment. If you're watching an action movie, this would be like uh, the action star in the last 10, 15 minutes of the movie, right before that big climactic moment, or in the midst of it, with that speech to that final rally of the troops. That final, you know, passionate speech that gets everybody to finally be brave enough to conquer whatever it is, right? See, I set before you today life and prosperity Death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. And then you'll live and increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you're entering to possess. And if your heart turns away, and you're not alone, and if you're drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing, the Jordan to enter in business. This day, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses, now choose life, so that you and your children may live, and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. <laughs> And then, see, the Word of God is powerful. Sometimes you might have to know a little bit of where to look, but if you just keep reading, there's a, a big story that's unfolding in the Old and the New Testament. That, that God has a, a big story that is, look, God wants good for you, but don't get it twisted. If we don't respond and follow after the way of the Lord, we can't expect the blessings that come of someone who will. Amen. Amen. Amen.
And that's kind of the, the big moral of the story. The moral of the story. I present to you life and death. Choose life. You know, it's like a, which, you know, here we are. There's death, destruction, there's curses. You know, no one's going to choose that, but you not choosing this will lead you there, says Moses. Says Paul, says James, says Saul, you know. Um, and so all of this points us to where we are today. Points us to uh, what will we be, how will we possess our life. Ancient Jewish understanding believed that every single thing you do will either promote and lead to life or it will promote and lead to death. They believe that you could be alive, that you could be like a walking dead person. What does that mean? It means perhaps you have given up on something, you are um, betraying certain rituals, maybe you can just call it what you're betraying the Lord. And you've started to, to walk in a way that is, you're living a lie. You're living in addiction and bondage, that yoke of slavery that started out in Galatians 1. It leads you to death and destruction. That's where the way of eating kosher came from, because it's all about milk and meat, and milk is life, and meat is death. It's really about the blood and the, and the milk. And it's a way of saying, are you, going to, are you going to promote life or are you going to promote death? Are you going to walk in? And you, it was just about separating. It doesn't mean that all meat is bad. But it, you can't have both. You can't walk in one and the other at the same time. Strange things, but you get that. And the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is still our God. And Jesus came to tell, to tell us and teach us these things just the same. To show us that when the rains come, not if they do, when the rains come in your life, when problems come and all kinds of many things descend upon your family, your nation, what will you do with your actions, your words? Will you promote life? Will you promote life Will you do things that lead to life? Lead to hope and a wellspring that can come, the hope that comes with an opportunity for more life? Or will you promote death? Will you say with your words things about death? Things about life that lead you towards destruction and darkness and all of the many lists Galatians 5. So I just leave you with that. If I were Moses, I'd give you that plea. I present to you two options. You know, it's not so simple, but in a way it is. It is. It is. You can choose hell or you can choose heaven. You can choose the way of eternity or you can choose the way that puts a death nail in life today. You can choose one or the other with your actions and your words and everything you do. In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. We have a God that came not only to give us life, but to share. And for those that felt like their life was either close to its end or was meaningless, was worthless, Christ came and sat at tables. Christ would eat with anyone. Tax collectors and sinners. Disciples that were competing for who was the best. People that just didn't really grasp and fully comprehend the grace and the kingdom of God, but do any of us. 
Are any of us really worthy of communing with God? No. No. But that's not the point. The point is that in our sinfulness, Christ came and died for us on our behalf. And drew us to the Father. <coughs> Despite us, God has come to love us. The night in which he was betrayed, Jesus, at the last meal, took the bread. He broke the bread. <coughs> he said, take and eat. This is mine. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, God. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of salvation. Drink from this, all of you. The forgiveness of sins. Will you pray with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reminder that this is the table of Jesus. And the table of Jesus invites you. It is not Koch's Chapel's table. It is not the United Methodist table. It is Christ's. And in the same way that Christ invites you, we invite you to this table. Come. The table is open. I'll ask those that are helping with communion to please come forward. Mm <clears throat> and I'll remind everyone as well that the chancel rail is open if you would like after offering, I'm sorry, after communion, if you'd like to come and kneel and pray for a moment, you are more than welcome.
anyone need us to come to you?